Hey everybody, it's Mark Edward Lewis with Cinema Sound. Today we're going to take a look at a really, really cool thing that I bet you you didn't know Isotope RX did. We're going to talk about batch fixing, but in a very, very specific way. Now you know how it is when you get sometimes movie files that either you've recorded on your phone or you've recorded somewhere else, and you really need to fix that audio. Well, how do you get a movie file into a digital audio workstation? Well, usually you can, but it, sometimes it's a mess. But in an Isotope RX, it will do it for you, and you can edit it independently of the video. What? I know. Check it out. All right, we're here in Isotope RX six, and I know there's they've had they've had many new numbers since then, but uh, this does basically the same thing that all the new ones will do. Um, it's just what I happen to have up right now. So let's check it out. There's a shoot here. Let's say this is footage that you've received, a bunch of movie files, and I'm on a Mac, and it's got audio embedded. So if I scroll, I have nothing to hide. All right. And we can immediately hear that there's a lot of work that needs to be done there. Reverb, noise, all kinds of things like this. So normally we'd have to, you know, import this into compressor or something else, or maybe even Adobe Media Encoder and get the audio out. But in an Isotope RX and in an, actually in Adobe Audition, you can just bring the movie audio in, I mean the movie in, and it strips out the audio. So check this out. I'm going to say right click or control click. Open in Isotope RX6. Now, depending on the length of your movie, how big it is, it does have to do a lot of computations to kind of figure out, hey, is this audio copacetic or whatever. But once you do that, then it's in. And here it is. There, there's, all the, there's all the audio. We've got all the dialogue down here. Let's just make sure. Well, I suppose that would be all right. And you can hear that it's sort of on one side because there's no audio over here. And they recorded this with the, let me see if I get this right. I think it's the Ceremonic, it's the um, Smart Mixer. And they put a lavalier on one side and then left the other side blank, which is fine. And it went into the phone um, uh, via the lightning connector. And so and that, that works great. You can see the problem with recording on your phone because of the, this edge that's here, how the compression kind of messes with uh, with sound. But what, what, it, what, we, what we're left with is sound on one side and noise on the other, which is, you know, we want to get rid of the noise. We want to be able to process this in a way that makes sense. But we also want to be able to do this for all of the movie files, not just one. All the audio and all the movie files, have them stripped out, have them processed, and we can do that with just a click of a button because all the settings were were all the same. So what do we have to do? Well, the first thing we have to do is deal with this, that it's only on one side nonsense. How do we do that? We're going to go to mixing. And in mixing, it allows us to say which channel do we want where. And it's, it might be a little confusing, but these two bits right here basically say how much of what channel goes into the left output and how much of what channel goes into the right. Now, we don't want any of the left channel at all to show up in either channel. We just want it to be mono. So we turn down the left channel and we turn up the right channel in both. And now, I, when I hit preview, I have nothing to hide. Now it's in mono. I have nothing to hide. But if I flip the phase on the left side, It sounds super cool in Zulu until you put it back into mono and then it will completely cancel. So what we want is the left and the left to be on minus one and one or whatever, one and one, whatever. Minus one and one basically means they cancel each other. And then the right to be up full. And now right. it's, when we hit preview. Well, I suppose that would be all right. In happy mono. And what we would do is we'd select all and hit process. And now we have this, which is exactly what we want. Nice and mono. Yay. Okay. But we don't want to, well, it's okay. We can leave this now. So the next thing we want to do is to be able to make it a nice and even volume. And we're going to go to loudness. We're going to make the loudness maybe about minus 20 LKFS, which is about right. We're going to select all and hit process. It takes a little while to do this complicated, complicated math, but once it does, then we've got everything at a nice even level. The next thing we want to do is to deal with this noise. And we've got a nice noise print here. plenty of good noise to get rid of. We're just going to go to spectral denoise. And as we know how to do, we will hit learn. Now that we've selected the noise, it makes that print. I'm going to put the musical noise artifact or the artifact to control right here about musical noise or so. We're going to say about 13 decibels. I think everything else is about right. And then we're going to select all and process. 
And again, lots of computation to be done here. But once it does it, we should see a nice, much nicer clean thing. And this little ridge that we have here should actually get some more mathematics and some nice extension because of how Isotope does what it does. Yeah, we can see these nice peaks have actually gone up and uh, helped clear out some of that artifact noise. The last thing we want to do is add an EQ, help this out a little bit. So we're going to go down here. Oh, there it is. There's EQ. Oh, I already like this setting. So we're going to the high pass filter, 48 decibels per octave, which is like a really strong thing. And then 85, there's nothing going on in her voice below 85 hertz. In fact, there's probably nothing going on below 90 hertz. And then a nice high frequency boost. If we look at this at a shelf about, eh, we'll call it 5K, 6 decibels, that should do it. Already select all, we hit process. And now, I know I'm running out of screen space here. We go back to where we were. Well, I suppose that would be all right. I have nothing to hide. Super nice and super clean. There is that room that's in there, though. You hear it ringing away, yeah? Well, I suppose that would be all right. Sounds like a, you know, she's in a big reflective room, which we don't like. So we're going to go to D Reverb, which is here. And then how D Reverb works, this little mystery is we're going to select the actual dialogue that we want to D Reverb, which has the reverb in it. We hit learn. It figures itself out. It trains itself. Yay. It sets some settings. We take a listen. Well, I suppose that would be all right. And also we have enhanced dry signal on, which is super important. The reverb really isn't showing up in the highest frequency, so we can turn that down. Well, I suppose that would be all right. And it's much more present now. We like that. We process. And D-reverb is another one that's really, really uh, processing intensive. Now, we could do this for every one of these movie files, every one of these takes. But since the volume was left the same and the microphone was in the same place, why don't we use Batch in Isotope RX to make this happen, which is exactly what we want to do. Once we do that, then we can just go bang. It goes through and processes it all the time. Now, remember this. When you're doing this to a movie file, it's going to take a lot longer than it does with an audio file because it has to, again, strip everything out first. So, all right, that looks beautiful to me. So, so much nicer. And we could if we wanted to do another noise pass if we want, but you get the idea. Here's batch processing under window. There we go. It just put it in the wrong window. Hi. So um, I've already been using this for some other projects. So we're going to use untitled. And I'm going to say, um, first, let's add files. And these are the files. I'm just going to say, hey, add all of these movies. And you notice I haven't saved the session that I have because all that would do is just either save over the movie uh, or whatever or make a – we're just going to do this all in a batch and it'll be fine. So, all right, here it is. And what we're going to do, this little plus window here, it might be hard to see. We hit plus and we get an action. And now how many actions do we have here? One, two, three, four, five. We got a lot to be done. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five. And it's going to just do whatever defaulting it is. Whatever is at the top is what it's going to do first. So for us, we want to do, where did it go? I can't even find it anymore. Oh, there it is. Mixing. So we're going to click and scroll down to mixing. And then the next thing we want to do is loudness. It's not actually under uh, perfectly alphabetized. I'm not sure why. And then the next thing we want to do is spectral denoise. And the next thing we want to do is EQ which is exactly how we've done this. And then last but not least is D reverb there. Now, how do we store the settings for them? We simply hit record, which I know it's weird, but think of it like it's recording the settings, like a, like a scribe is recording. We did, and since these windows are all up and we've processed them, we know that they work, we can just hit record. You notice it says no settings until you hit that. And then if you want to view it for whatever reason, you can click view. Well, that's mixing already up. Let's see. Let's Where's denoise? There it is. View. And then it'll show you that, yes, in fact, I have these settings stored, which is great. Now, these settings are actually stored in untitled, which is super cool. Um, and in an entitled, uh, if I want to go back and save it, oh, it's actually already saved, I can pull this back up if the sessions are all the same or if the footage or the clips or whatever. How do we get this out? Well, here's how I like to do it. I like to make, an, uh, orig uh, make a new folder. So I don't want to put it in the original file folder. I want to say choose folder. I'm going to go here, here, uh, here to Becky's clone footage. I'm going to say new folder and I'm going to say cleaned takes. Actually, I'm going to say Oops. Audio cleaned take so it's not confusing with the color correction. It's going to go in there. 
Cool. Now I'm going to say modify file name, but I'm only going to modify it um, with either a subscript before the file, before the name, so that if for whatever reason these files got thrown in with the old ones, they're always going to be at the top. Because if you know about ASCII and all that stuff, the subscript or the space, if it's at the front of the file name, makes it before everything else. Or I'm just going to add before the name or after the name, the word cleaned. And maybe that's for now the right thing to do. So we're going to say cleaned. I'm going to put a subscript in here like this. So now it's before the name. And we want to make sure it's in, I mean, wave is usually a good one. You can choose any of these. Don't do MP3 by God, but wave. And we want to make sure that the options are correct. The original file will say it's 24 bit and that's all fine for me. And then once we're good to go, we hit process. Now, if you have a multi-threading machine, this is going to use every ounce of transistors in your machine to make this happen. In fact, every one of these is going to take a chip on your multiprocessor machine. And if we look, let's just go to this folder that we created. There's audio cleaned takes. It hasn't saved anything yet because it's still working on them all. But in a moment, once it gets through, who's going to win? There's D-Reverb. There's the last one on the third one, I think it's 231. Once it gets that done, then we'll see that it will save it out and you will have a brand new spanking happy. There it is, succeeded. Boom, cleaned with that in the front. So I'm going to let this continue. So you can see how super useful that is for just doing your cleaning. And you always want to do your audio cleaning before you do any syncing. I consider it like an audio telecine. You know, you take all of your takes, you take everything else, you clean them, you process them. Before you even worry about sync, make sure they sound all right if you can um, without having to get into too much trouble. But usually it's, you know, something basic like that, you know, getting them to the same level, doing a general denoise, maybe a nice little EQ for dialogue in particular, and then you're good to go. So we have an entire education devoted to do, teaching you how to do just this and even more on the Cinema Sound Education on cinemasound.com. We'd love for you to become a member and so that we can be talking to you and helping you with your independent productions and getting you to that Hollywood level uh, production value and audience impact and immersion. So come and join us on cinemasound.com and definitely subscribe to these videos because we got a lot here and a lot more coming out. Until then, we'll see you in post. 